Uh, in the next example, we're going to do it a little bit different. And I'm going to show you, you know, how we can sort of exploit this in a few different ways of working uh, wet and to dry. So that's kind of more of a layering thing. So here we may be layering one over top of the other, but because we're doing it wet into wet, uh, everything's sort of one layer because it's fusing together. Um, so we'll do it a little bit different here, but we'll sort of explore the same ideas. Okay, now let's look at layering. Um, so layering is a technique we use in watercolor and acrylic oils, you name it, um, to basically create, you know, it could be depth, it could be saturation, it could be light and shadow. There's a lot of different ways we can think and use layering. Uh, so for example, when we put the tea wash down, uh, if we were to have allowed that to dry, then we could have painted over top of that. So in that case, you would have had one layer and then we're stacking another layer on top. So let's just do that real quick. And for the sake of um, just doing something uh, simple here, I'll do it in a very simple landscape. So a little bit of pigment off camera, you know the drill, you know exactly what I'm doing with my brush. And what I'll do is I'll start with a very light blue here. And what I can do is take a little more blue. So this is just cerulean with a touch of cobalt now. A little bit more pigment. And I can do this. Now I'm going to leave some of that light blue there. Now I'll clean my brush. And I'll get a little bit of yellow ochre. Maybe with a touch of uh, sienna. A burnt sienna. So now I'm going to start down here. I'm gonna drag that up and that's a you know dry surface so I'm getting that a little bit of texturing here and I'm gonna let that sort of touch into that blue and then I'll just sort of run a brush a diagonal here just like that and now I have uh, this is a variegated wash and it's also gradated so I have a gradation of darker blue into a lighter blue. Now, if I wanted to create a gradation from the ground up, I can flip it and then create something like this. And again, I'll just do a little bit here and then flip it like that. And now that's one layer. And, it's, and that's because I'm going to dry it. I'm not gonna do anything else to it until it's dry. That way I can stack on top of it without uh, impacting it, okay? So I don't want this to change. Now there's two ways, or really I guess three ways, maybe even more than that, you can dry a wash. You can just leave it alone and let it air dry, or we can use a hair dryer, or I can kind of use the first method of letting it air dry, and just put it in the sun. The sun is going to dry it really quick. So if you have a nice sunny day and it's not a hassle to run outside and you don't really want to influence the wash at all, then you can put it outside. The sun is going to do it quicker. And if I put it in the sun, you know, I may want to lay it flat like that. Um, if I use a dryer, sometimes a, the force of the air coming out of a dryer is going to push that wash around. And you may not want that. You, you may want to keep it the way it is. So if you don't want to, you know, ruin and try to push the pigments around, uh, then the sun or just letting it uh, dry either flat or out in the sun is going to be the best way to do it. So I'm going to put this in the sun for a couple of minutes and I'll be right back. Okay, so now we're dry to the touch. And it doesn't matter if I go back in with tea, milk, or honey um, because it's not going to really impact the wash underneath. So this is layer one and layer two can be applied um, depending on you know what it is you're trying to do. So just for the sake of having it here, I'm gonna put uh, up here honey just so we know where we're all at here. And remember, this was uh, working a tea slash milk uh, into that.
that wash. So again, you know that this may not be a problem. You may be working with a landscape or something and you want that effect. Uh, but in any case, you may not. So you just have to know the results you'll probably get when you're dealing with a wet and wet uh, technique. Here, because we're painting over a dry a wash uh, again anything goes now you can do a combination here so if I were to paint a little a backdrop background here I can start with let's say a T and then as I move over to the right I can move into a honey so if I if you start to layer things I know that you know you don't always have to stick to one thickness or another. Um, you can always mix it up. Um, so, and there's a lot of different ways we can mix it up, believe me. So what I will do is do a T and I'll put a, a light little indication of some trees back there. And then I'm going to drop thicker paint into it. So let's do that. I'm going to take a little bit of uh, yellow here. I'll use both ochre and Naples and a little bit of cobalt. Now I want this to be a green. Okay, so that's pretty green. I'm gonna make that something like this. We can always test it. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of this blue into it just to saturate it a little bit more, make it a little bit darker and a little bit cooler. So that's pretty thin. So if I were to move, drag my finger through it, you see how it's they're going right back into it so I'm not getting a separation like that. Uh, that means it's really thin, really weak. So what I can do is, uh, and here's what I'll do. Um, I'm going to take my brush and hold it overhand like this and just sort of drag that along the surface like that. Okay, and that's going to give me a nice loose stroke. Now let's say I want to add thicker greens into that. So I can take some blues here, uh, maybe even some yellow ochres. And what I'm doing is I'm creating sort of a milk slash honey texture. And let's say now I, I just want to drop a little bit uh, into the bottom of those trees and bushes uh, just to give the indication that maybe it's a little bit darker down here uh, as opposed to the top. So that is wet into wet. But I'm also using a variety. So I'm using a tea first and then adding maybe, let's say, a milk. Nah, I wouldn't even call that honey uh, into it. Now let's take a little bit of pure blue here with a little bit of this yellow ochre. And that's really honey. So that's real thick. So I can drop that in there. And <clears throat> some of the, <clears throat> excuse me, some of these dots may hold their shape um, because it's a little bit thicker paint. So now I'll clean my brush off real good. And I'll go back into these greens that are mixed up. And now let's say I want to add a tree. Um, so again, I'm going to back up on my handle here and just use the tip of the brush right in there. And let's just do a little scumbling here. So I'll just sort of do a little bit of this. And let's just do one more, maybe a little bit lower like that. And this is for balance sake. Let's just do a bigger one over there. Now I can do the same thing. I can come in here with some blues, some browns, some yellows. And now underneath the bellies, um, I can just drop a little bit in there. Now I can take just, I'll get all that pigment off. I can take, because I've got puddling going on, I've got wet paint. Uh, what I can do is sort of just pull that right on down uh, into a trunk. So I can sort of do this and we'll pull this one even a little bit closer uh, like that. Um, we can pull uh, some you know sticks out of that as well. Maybe we got a little shape like that. Okay, now I can take a little bit of this brown and with those greens, and let's say our light's coming from the right. And we can do this. And maybe I want this shadow a little bit darker because it's closer to us. So I can go with a little bit darker pigment. 
and just drop that into it like that and then we can kind of get a nice loose top going like this okay so that's just some different ways we can exploit um, layering and again this is a very simple idea uh, these are simple techniques um, but all watercolor paintings are built this way they're they're built with wet and wet washes they're wet and dry washes thin paint thick paint uh, timing uh, when to lay it when to put it down and when to leave it alone it just depends on what you want to do another little technique while I've got you here and we're on this uh, theme is we can splatter so splatter is when we load the brush up with fairly thin paint uh, tea or milk and it's really saturated there and I can do what's called splattering like this and that's going to create these uh, kind of random dots now when you splatter ideally what you want it to be is one stroke so you want to go down and and stop what you don't want to do is go down and up if you do this then the, the splattering is going to go down and then it's going to go up you may not want to do that it may end up on your walls it may end up you know in places that you don't want it so if you're trying to keep it you know on in an area then I suggest, you know, you try to get used to doing this and not this. Okay, so if I were to, we'll just do a few dots like that. And then I can just use a damp brush and we can just kind of make uh, little rocks and just some texture, you know, out of those things. Um, so that's just a, a technique I wanted to throw out there uh, to you. It's a good way to uh, add texture depending on what you're painting. And I'm just trying to cover as many bases as I can here um, with this little sketch. At this point, the trees in the background are still pretty wet. And so now, uh, when a, something is wet like that, um, we can lift paint. Uh, you can lift paint with a damp brush. You cannot really lift paint effectively with a dry brush. Um, it's like a dry sponge. If you ever had a really dry sponge and it's sort of hard and you try to dry something up, it tends to really push the liquid around at first. And it takes a while for it to really work because um, it's not wet. So a sponge works better when it's damp. A brush is the same way. So if I wet my brush and then again, I tap off that excess, now I've got the light coming from this way. See, I can come in here and lift some of that paint while it's wet. And that's going to create a little more depth. So that'll create a sense of light maybe hitting the side of that tree. I can do the top here too. So I can lift a little bit here. I can lift a little bit there. And I can even lift a little bit here. So you see that creates a little bit different uh, lighting than what's over here. So um, lifting and removing paint is something you're going to want to do uh, quite a bit. Uh, maybe I want to add a little bit darker shadow on the tree that's closer to us. So we can work honey. So I can go with even a little bit of neutral tint, a little bit of blue, and then take a little bit of yellow into it here. And then I can drop a little bit of shadow uh, on some of these underneath. And that's going to give the illusion that that tree is closer than those. And I could even take that a step further and just, boom, really dab that one and make it feel like it's back there. So what happens in a landscape is that as objects move away from you they get lighter in value uh, and as they come closer they get a little bit darker they also get a little more yellow so you could exploit that too you could take a little bit of this yellow i'll clean my brush and let's say you wanted to add a little pop of yellow so you could do something like that and again, bring a little more definition to this tree. 
But now, because I use a really watery mixture into this almost dry wash, and that's nothing more than a wash. All of these are washes that are put down with symbols, okay? I didn't put them down abstractly like up here. I put them down with the intention that I wanted them to be a shape. And that shape could be a square, right? It could be a, like a house. It doesn't matter, um, but it's still a wash. Okay, it could be an apple. That, you know, it could be you know anything. So if I wanted to paint an apple, okay, and I want to drop a little yellow into it, maybe I want to drop a little bit of blue on the shadow side with a little stem. Okay, well that is nothing more uh, than a wash. And it's, the wash is being controlled a little more uh, for the reason is I want to make it into something recognizable, right? Something that uh, you would be able to relate to. So, you know, this is the nuts and bolts of painting and how, you know, we get that looks more like a plum or something, but anyway, um, how we get a certain result. But all the while, you know, thing you have to let watercolor mix, mingle uh, in the right moment. Okay, if you don't do that, then what you're going to do is you're going to end up with a fussy painting. So if I come in here, I'm like, oh, let me, I want to do this and that. And I knuckle down and I try to like make those washes. Um, do exactly what I want it to do, uh, then it's going to look real choppy and it's going to look real messy. A uh, watercolor works best when you allow it to do what it does best, and that's to uh, fuse, bleed, mix, and mingle. Certain things we can control, and there's other areas that we don't want to control. And if you do, you're going to find yourself fighting the medium because you're going against what it really wants to do having said that one other thing we can do is as the paint is drying um, we can scratch so you can kind of maybe scratch a twig maybe you want to scratch a highlight something like that um, so again this is sort of only works uh, when the paint is wet so maybe there's a little stick you know back here like that and again, if you want to show some detail, a little hint of white, you can scratch into wet paint. It's best to do it when it's semi-dry. If it's puddling up, a lot of times you can scratch into it, but it's just going to back run into the scratch. So if you can get it where it's semi-dry, okay, this is drying pretty fast. Maybe I want to scratch some siding uh, going across that. that. That'll probably hold pretty good. Um, if I get it where it's way too wet and I try to scratch, then it's probably just going to backfill and you're not going to get the results you're after. Okay. So that right there to me is, um, you know, just a really good exercise um, that you can do. And typically when a painting doesn't work well, it's because we either fuss with it or we use the wet and wet technique poorly. Um, or we didn't layer correctly and the shape that we were trying to make bled too much and it didn't hold its shape. Um, so th those are all things that are, you know, typically user error and, you know, that is, you know, our fault. Okay. That's not really the medium. So people say, oh, I don't want to paint with watercolor. It's too hard. Well, it is hard and it is challenging to kind of understand how it works. The problem is, you know, we're not allowing the medium to do what it does best and we're trying to control it too much. Okay. So anyway, that's that.